Hi everybody and welcome back to the workshop of me, Chris Fisher RPT, known as the Blind Wood Turner. Right, uh, after my video upload of my infill stencil platter, I thought I would do a, a video on uh, on these things. So, uh, you're probably thinking, oh wow, not another one, but uh, what's the big deal with the, a blind guy using one of these? Well, there's no big deal, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, I'm hopefully going to show you just some some ways that I practice. Uh, remember uh, that uh, old adage, failure to prepare, prepare to fail. Well, that's very true. Uh, and if you have got uh, an airbrush and a compressor languishing somewhere and you, you're itching to get it out and get it used uh, and incorporate it into some of your projects, it's not that difficult. But I would really stress that you spend a bit of time uh, getting a little bit of a practice setup going uh, so you can spend a bit of time just uh, getting in the zone uh, and getting the feel for your airbrush in your kit. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to quickly set up now uh, and bring you back and then we can start having a, a faff around and a play with the airbrush. Okay folks, so here we are set up uh, and of course I'm using my string to line up where I am so that should all be in frame now so what have I got here for my practice setup well of course I've got a piece of wood sacrificial piece of wood and three pieces of A4 paper on there so the two on the outside are for having a mess around with dialing the airbrush in and then the middle one we're just going to use a cheap uh, stencil now I've got a pack well not a pack a whole collection that one with the rubber band on is uh, various leaves. I uh, don't know what that one is without opening letters. So I I'll have to open all of these to feel. Oh, I think that's the uh, the Vikings, etc. So you get lots and lots of different packs of these. I got these from a local garden centre, craft centre. So you can have a mess with some cheap kiddie stencils before you pull the trigger uh, and get some high quality ones for your artwork and your projects so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a single colour give it a shake uh, these are obviously Hampshire Sheen Martin's intrinsic colours uh, and I like using these uh, because of the trigger spray so I can just spray what I need into the cup talking of cups I've got this cup which I can use for tipping uh, old stain and watering when I'm cleaning these are water based so I've got a over here a an old trigger spray filled with water for helping with the cleanup so when you're changing colors you can give it a quick zap with water blast it out, empty it, give it a quick wipe etc and we're good to go so let's get started so if I'm working on I'll start on that left page there so I'll move that over a little bit so basically I've got the airbrush uh, not ramped up to its max and let's get some colour in there put the cup cap on the lid so the beauty of these this style is it has the mag valve and also it has the screw at the back so you can adjust how far that the trigger is depressed and pulled back so first of all you just need to it'll take just a second to get some color coming through uh, so there you go that's a nice just a gentle fog so if we screw this in now let me just have a feel of that while it's still damp if you screw that in let's screw it in a bit more so what we've done now is I'm just feeling and the more we screw that in that should be doing a much more controlled fine line 
the more you screw it in the less that trigger is pulled back great for newbies you need this adjustability because if you're new to airbrushing and you're just gunning it and getting loads of colour down you're going to get paint everywhere and you're going to uh, sort of like get frustrated so I would recommend that you have your trigger only coming back as far as you're comfortable with and then if I if I the mag valve at the front if I sort of like really close that down and close that even more maybe just open that a bit more so hopefully you're seeing that now as I'm just whizzing around there maybe open that a little bit more so as you can see the mag valves give great controllability so everything combined together you will start getting dialed in and then obviously if you get a bit more stain in there and with the trigger being able to depress further back you can start fogging things in so really it's just a matter of practicing getting used to uh, you'll find your favorite stains and colors to put through of course you can put you know uh, automotive paints through these and acrylics uh, and there's lots of different brands of airbrush paint out there uh, these stains are fine but remember uh, a lot of things you will have to reduce down so you can get a, a dedicated reducer and you want the consistency really of about milk uh, coming through your airbrush so practice reducing things as well so again you can lay down quite a lot of colour very quickly with these and again you don't want to just be zapping it straight in like that because you're just gonna uh, overload and get drips and things so again you know keep the airbrush moving keep it fogging and you'll get lots and lots of different great results so what I'm going to do now is empty this give it a, a wash through and then we'll be back to do some more practice on the other sheet okay so I'm over here now and I've changed colour don't know what colour it is but I've changed it so let's just reiterate what we've gone over there using a conjunction of the rear screw and the mag valve if you've got one you can get great lines and obviously you will get a bit of a different effect if you're using acrylic or automotive paints but you can just practice and have fun now I'm listening and it sounds like when I just shook the colour up I've got some air bubbles in so I can hear a bit of a splatter coming out so I'm going to up the pressure on the airbrush on the way and see if I can clear it see obviously things like that you need to be aware of so I can still hear it splattering so uh, obviously my ears picking that up but you will be able to see so uh, yeah, just be aware of that folks 
and my uh, compressor has a tank so it's just kicked in now uh, and it's going to recharge itself so uh, the ones without the tanks they can keep running for about 15 minutes continuously then you need to give them a rest otherwise they get hot okay so I've got some intrinsic honey here uh, in the cup so I'm going to feel for this and we're going to gently let's just feel that yeah so we're just going to gently so I'm going to get it on my fingers but that's okay of course you would wear gloves so make sure I'm feeling I think I picked up a bit of colour that was already on the outside there but don't worry about it that was my hand just doing that, it's just a practice so we've picked up there some uh, colour and fogged it in nice and gently as the base so that's yellow or honey and now in here I've got some red so again I need to feel here and what I'm probably going to do is again <laughs> accidentally pick up some of this crusty old paint that's on the outside but what the hey obviously you guys wouldn't be using your hands so what we've got down there is some red as well so that's cool so of course you can be hitting this with a hairdryer very gently in between to uh, give it uh, some speeded up uh, drying in between what you're doing so I'm just tipping that back into there Okay folks, so I've changed this up for black now, so having a feel where it is, I'm going to gently fog, let me get my bearings again, around that edge and get some down there in the stem. So that is a very, very basic uh, airbrushing technique uh, just using a stencil and fogging in uh, and obviously you could <clears throat> swap out you get spare needles and tips with these things so you can sw swap out I've got uh, a, a 0.3 in this tip and needle so I can get it quite uh, quite fine if I need to let's just turn down the pressure on the compressor using the regulator and you can get very wispy effects as well and then you open obviously the valve that's already the screw at the back and you get down lots more color so yeah have at it have lots of fun uh, and we just need to do the reveal with this now actually so just put that somewhere safe okay so folks so here we go let's get this uh, feel for where I can peel off so hopefully you should be seeing that and it should have worked obviously the detail around the edges isn't going to be as crisp as let's yeah I can feel the paint the detail isn't going to be as crisp as it would be with something that's been uh, precision cut like Nick Agar's uh, infill stencils uh, but this you'll get great effects with and you can use them and you can more importantly practice till the cows come home uh, to get the colours and get your airbrush technique so really it's not like you need to be laying down little mists and fogs uh, and you don't want to be getting close and uh, buggering it up as it were so that's it you can do very simple uh, autumnal maple leaves with uh, yellows and reds and oranges and you know a hint of black uh, to show a bit of age and decay but that's it yeah so it's very important also that you clean your airbrush thoroughly after each use and if you're doing a demonstration or a long project you know from time to time it might just be 
worthwhile just uh, flushing through some water if you're using water based and some thinners or some denatured alcohol or meth or whatever if you're using spirit based stuff so yeah uh, keep on top of your cleaning uh, after each demo or project disassemble it very carefully and clean all the parts thoroughly so you're ready to go for the next time so that's it uh, I'll just finish off now okay folks I'm in frame so <laughs> There you have it, let's reach for this pal. Right, oh, it's got all tape stuck to it. So there you go, you've got uh, a very simple, uh, quick and easy uh, guide to just messing around and getting dialed in with your airbrush. Uh, obviously, practice makes perfect. You can have a lot of fun, you can do amazing things uh, with stencils or without if you're you know, a great freehand artist. So uh, highly recommended, a great addition to your uh, maker arsenal uh, and not as complex or as complicated as you might think so that's it from me I've had a great time this morning just faffing around showing you how simple it is to do some uh, amazing designs using stencils uh, and you don't even need to be able to see what you do although uh, you, in my case I get my fingers when I'm trying to feel around the line but that's it uh, thanks for tuning in don't forget to like share comment and subscribe give me the thumbs up uh, and until the next time, keep on turning everybody. Bye!